Michigan. Let's talk Michigan. Uh, this is a popular team, I think, uh, as a national title contender for a lot of people. I see you look like you're kind of licking your chops over there. Uh, this is a team that lost like pretty high level talent. Mozzie Smith, DJ Terminator, uh, Oluwatimi, I believe that's how you say that center. Uh, but they return a lot. They return a lot of players on this team that went 13 and one. It was one game away from playing the national championship. They beat Ohio state for the second straight year, won the big 10 for the second straight year. You get JJ McCarthy back, junior Colson, Will Johnson, uh, Raheem Anderson. I mean, Ernest Hausman they get from Nebraska, Michael Barrett, Chris Jenkins. I mean, the, the list kind of goes on and on. What are your thoughts on this uh, Michigan team? Over under 10 and a half. To me, this is a play. This is an absolute play. Is I'm this your first play? Over. This is my first play of the Big Ten. I, I think it's college football playoff or bust for this team. I look up and down this roster, position by position. I see zero weaknesses. The only weakness, if you're getting nitpicky, is maybe they don't have elite high and wide receivers like your USC's, like your George, like your even Georgia, Ohio State, obviously. But they're still really, really serviceable and they're getting better. And then the other weakness is probably Jake Moody in the kicking game is gone, trying to replace him. He was a stud. But other than that, I think every other position arguably gets significantly better or even it, it's even draw. And they were really, really good last year. I just up and down this roster. They did a great job in the transfer portal, plugging holes on the O-line. I mean, they went and they got Josh Wallace from UMass in the, in the secondary. J.J. McCarthy, they got him a, a QB coach. Kurt Campbell, who's a, a technician guru for him. Uh, his mechanics needed huge improving, and he will absolutely help with that. There were so many times last year where they could have had big plays or they had negative big plays against them because he had bad mechanics in terms of his dropbacks like the wrong the wrong footing. I'm not going to go into that detail because I don't honestly know a ton of that stuff. But I I think you got to believe he's going to be a lot better this year. A whole offseason of being the guy. Oh, I'm excited for Michigan football this year. I I think this is the best team in the Big 10. I'll say that. I I, I have I have the over I them winning the conference. I think a lot of good things are going to happen this year for Minnesota or for Michigan and Jim Harbaugh will finally get that college football playoff win. Uh I lean over. I lean over. I'm not taking it like you are, but I lean over. Uh, I mean, you're not worried about their out of conference. Not <laughs> right. I mean, <laughs> come on. Um, and then the West, you draw Nebraska. Uh, you get Minnesota, but you go to Minnesota, which is, you know, I guess what it is. And then you get Purdue at home. Like, that's not, that's not crazy. That's not crazy draw at all. <laughs> at all. Um, you don't have to play Wisconsin at. Wisconsin don't have to play Iowa at Iowa. I mean, you just again you the games just circle are at Penn State and which is not gonna be white out because that's probably gonna be a big noon kickoff. Which, which is, saves Michigan. That's honestly crazy enough to say that put me over the top to where I think this is an auto play, maybe even a multi unit play. Um we'll get into that later. I do have one lock on the big twelve the big ten later on. But that's first of all, that's another segment. Fox, what are you doing? Being selfish, taking the big noon kickoff, at least take that that seven p.m. slot and let us do a night out, a white out, night game for Penn State. It'd be so much better. Everybody else would like it. it Michigan ESPN's and not going to do that. <laughs> yeah, ESPN's well, not going to do that. No, well, they're changing the, the new deals with with uh, NBC and CBS. Oh, CBS. That's right. That's right. Couple years. Sorry, so my bad. we'll see what happens with the white out in Penn State. Back to Michigan. I don't think there's any, there's no holes. There's no holes. The schedule is pretty favorable. I think if they, I think to me, worst case scenario, they split with Penn State or Ohio State. I don't think they lose both those games, which to me show exactly why I'm taking the over. The only problem is, is they do not get tested until probably when they go to, to Penn State. As much as I love Minnesota, the talent gap between Michigan and Minnesota is tremendous. I think it's very, very large. So I, that's why I'm I'm leaning towards that's why I'm I'm taking the over for Michigan for sure. Yeah, now I'm I'm with you. They're really good. I'm leaning over, but I will play a little bit of devil's advocate here, right? People have been talking about this offseason. Oh, Kirk Campbell. Now who is this Kirk Campbell guy? He's a new quarterbacks coach. Uh 
at Michigan, which everyone can seem uh, everyone seems to be talking about, right? Oh, he's he's the guy. He's the guy. I don't know what Kirk Campbell has actually done. I don't know what has he actually done. I don't. I don't actually know. JJ keeps talking big time about. It. He's like, oh, this is my guy, right? This is my guy. He keeps using that term, my guy. Um. I don't know what that means. I guess he was with Old Dominion for like a year. Like, how does he know him? I don't know. Maybe he met him at like some recruiting event or some camp or something. I don't know. But I at least I don't know enough about that situation to fully be confident that JJ McCarthy is going to like fix himself mechanically. I think he's a really good player. He's a fantastic quarterback. He's one of the best quarterbacks in the Big Ten uh, easily. And I don't think that's a debate, but uh it's hard for me with how good Penn State is this year to confidently say that this should be an over. Um, and they do get Ohio State at home. So I, I don't know. I might regret not taking this, but yeah, man, something. I don't know. I will say, though, I do have a future on this team to win the national championship at 10 to 1, uh, which I don't think those odds are up there anymore. I think they've dropped like. 800 or 750 or something like that but i took them pretty early uh because i do really like this team i love their depth kind of everywhere their offensive line oh my goodness if you're gonna take them to win the national championship the big 10 to win any given game this year it is because of that offensive line we haven't even talked about their running backs donovan edwards is ridiculous and that was the backup running back that i just mentioned blake Corm is potential heisman candidate don't waste your money betting it on him but He's again potential Heisman candidate. Potentially there could be there at New York. Uh, but man, I that offensive line is crazy. Uh, they're all super experienced, so I'm a huge fan of that. They might be one of the best offensive lines in the country, right up there with uh, what maybe Georgia, Georgia, uh, Minnesota, kind of <laughs> no, Minnesota. I will say uh, they lose an All American center, right? The the Remington guy, whatever Olu, I'll I love Alu Watomi, whatever his name is. To be honest, I think I was overrated. I thought John Michael Smith was way better, but we'll get. <laughs> you knew I was gonna bring that up. Yeah, you know, like, oh, shouldn't have won the Joe Morgan or, or not Joe Morgan. What's the the Remington? Yeah, you said Remington. the Remington. Although this line so, did win the Joe Morgan last year. Yeah, right? yeah, which is fair. That was a good O line, but Drake Nugent they brought they got from Stanford was a multi year starter there, and they also have two young guys that they really really like, specifically Raheem Anderson that's played center for them there all spring. That so either way they're gonna have good depth there at center. They got two tackles, two guards. I mean, the guy they bring over from Arizona State, Ladarius Henderson too. They got seven, eight, nine guys that they feel really, really confident about. I know the senior bowl has them at like six or seven dudes deep. So, uh, yeah, I, I don't think there's a weak spot on this offense. Maybe wide receivers. But they got some nice depth. Ron, depth. Ronnie Bell is a big loss. He had a ton of targets last year. But this way, I think it helps JJ more because he has to spread the ball around. Roman Wilson's back. Cornelius Johnson started to play really, really well last year and carried that into the spring. Darius Clemens. It's going to be a sophomore this year. It seems to have emerged in spring as well. And they got Colson Loveland, who's a really, really good tight end, catching the ball for sure. And plus Donovan Edwards out of the backfield is an elite too. So I, I, I just love, I love the way they're going to progress on offense. Their defense was top 20 last year. Now they lose Mozzie Smith, who I know you think is a big loss. And I agree too. He was huge, huge. for them stopping the run. He was massive. But I think Chris Jenkins Literally. is not going to be better. But he's a really, really good pass rusher. Maybe even better than Smith. But it'll be that stop in the run there that, that will be hard for them. Braden McGregor is a guy you have to mention. He's finally healthy now. He's not quite Aiden Hutchinson, but similar mold in terms of, you know, big dude, versatility to play, you know, online scrimmage or drop back into coverage. He's going to be really productive off the edge there. Their linebacking core is maybe the best one in the country. Junior Colson, right now, Linebackers aren't really taken in the first round anymore, but he's got first round upside and talent for sure. At Mike Linebacker, linebacker Ernest Hausman from Nebraska, those two pairing together is really, really exciting as he was one of the top players in the transfer portal coming out from Nebraska. And then Michael Barrett, too. Good depth there. 
Secondary, they definitely lose some pieces for sure. DJ Turner and Green both gone, but Will Johnson, I know he as a, a true freshman last year was a monster. Had some growing pains for sure, but you hope to see that that step in his second year after a really good true freshman year. The problem is that other corner spot, they got guys they like though, right? It'll probably be Josh Wallace, um, especially at the beginning of the year, four year starter for UMass that, that took, they took in the portal, but they got some freaks, some freaks in the in the the wings waiting for him. Amorian Walker is like six three and runs a a four three. They they compared him to Tariq Woolen from UTSA a couple years ago. Uh, I I don't know. I I think. Jaden McBurrow's return from ACL injury. And then both their safeties come back. Rod Moore and Mark Makari Page. I don't think there's a hole on this team. And I think there are so many strengths to them where they have depth and returning guys and good coaching, good quarterback play. I just think this is the recipe for a championship level team. Yep. I already got my future. I don't need to take the over, but I agree. This is a very good football team. 